Damn it, dude. I can't believe it closed. Now I'm never gonna get my fries. Hello friends, and welcome back to the channel. If you're new here, my name is Arturo, and I am an artist and technologist. Today, we're picking up where we left off in the introduction to this series by covering some best practices for photo scanning, as well as some workflows for cleaning up scans and then incorporating them in 3D scenes. If you haven't yet seen the introduction, you'll find it here, as well as in the playlist linked in the description. Before we dive in, some important notes. One, I'll leave chapter markers as well as relevant links in the description of this video. Two, this is not a sponsored video. And three, while I'll be using Blender and Polycam as my preferred workflow, the concepts we'll cover will carry through to other tools too. In the last video, we covered photogrammetry and LiDAR technologies and how these allow us to capture objects and environments from the real world and bring them into 3D software. We learned that Polycam has two capture modes, LiDAR mode and photo mode. LiDAR uses the sensor on iPhones and iPads to capture objects in the world, and photo mode uses photos that we upload to the cloud, which then get processed and sent back to us as a 3D reconstruction of our object. Photo mode enables a whole range of capture subjects that just weren't possible with LiDAR, including really small and detailed objects. I've scanned a lot of objects over the past two years, so here are some of the best practices to help you in your capture journey. Be aware. Be aware of your surroundings. Like with everything else, safety comes first. Being aware of your surroundings also entails thinking about the lighting under which you'll capture your object or scene. Even lighting will yield better scans since it will help more details of your object or scene to be visible. Be ready. Have your capture device charged and make sure that the lens is clean before you scan. Be steady. Take your time. You want to keep your object in focus and avoid motion blur as much as you can. Motion blur will occur when an object is moving fast in front of your camera, so you want to avoid fast movements. Be thorough. You want to make sure that in your capture, you've covered the entirety of the object, keeping at least one part visible throughout most of the scan. I found that when I make note of this and keep at least a third of the object in the photos while I'm working through it, the scans are often cleaner and more precise. And so in a way, by being thorough, I'm helping the software reconstruct my object with more ease. This will also help you avoid holes in the mesh. Be selective. Think about the object that you're scanning and how best to capture it. Highly reflective items like metals or aluminum or refractive items like glass, for example, won't scan too well. And if your object is small and highly detailed, it might be best to use a photo-based capture method instead of LiDAR, since LiDAR scans won't read as well with smaller objects. Keeping in mind what your object is and what method will work better for scanning will go a long way in helping you get a cleaner mesh. And a bonus tip, practice makes progress. So go out there and start scanning. If you go over these best practices every time you go out, I'm certain that your scans will get better and better. If you want a copy of these and more detailed tips and tricks for photogrammetry, I created a free guide that you can download on my Gumroad. The link is in the description. To get things started, the first thing we need to do is select a scan. I'll include some of the scans I'll be working with as a download on my Gumroad if you want to use them for your own projects or play along at home. They'll be completely free. I just ask that you tag me in what you make because I'd love to see where they end up. If you're using Polycam, then you'll want to follow along with this section. Otherwise, if you're using the scans on Gumroad or one of the other tools listed in the description, then feel free to skip along to the section titled Cleaning Up Your Scans. So you've taken your scan and you're happy with the way it looks. You took advantage of Polycam's crop tool to get rid of any unwanted areas of your capture, and you found the share button and exported your scan as a GLTF file. This is a common file format and will include the appropriate components we'll need for Blender to load our scan. You'll need to point Blender to the file you've just exported, so be sure to export it to a folder you can find easily later. I'll be using Blender 2.93 for this, but the same idea should work for future versions of Blender. To load our scan into Blender, you might need to enable the GLTF Import Export add-on, but don't worry, it comes pre-installed into Blender. 
For this and other add-ons, you'll navigate to the Edit menu, then Preferences, then Add-ons, and use the search feature to look for GLTF. If it already has a check mark by it, you're good to go. If not, click on the box and close out the Preference menu. To bring our scan in, we'll navigate to the File menu, and under Import, we'll choose GLTF. This will bring up a screen that will allow you to search the folders in your computer for GLTF files. Find the file you just exported and load it in. While in edit mode, you can use the selection methods to select any unwanted geometry and delete it. I recommend doing this in face selection mode, which you can get to by clicking on the face selection icon in the top left corner or by pressing the shortcut 3. If you want to get rid of sections like this one all at once, you can enable x-ray mode and your selection will go through the mesh. While in the selection mode, if you press the C key, you'll move from box selection to circle selection. This is good for painting around the geometry you want to select. If you want to go back to box selection, you can simply press B for box. If you want finer control over your selection, use lasso selection. Press control and hold the right mouse button in order to lasso select. Lasso selection is great for selecting freeform segments that you wouldn't easily achieve with box or circle selection. To toggle between the different selection modes, you can press W while in edit mode. Toggling between the solid and material preview modes while cleaning up the mesh will help you determine what parts need accentuating and what parts need to go. You can use the knife tool to more deliberately cut your mesh, making it easier to separate unwanted faces for removal. Another way of easily cleaning up your scans is creating geometry to delete segments of your scan. For this example, we'll use a cube to remove the top of the trash bin that Baby Groot here is standing on. For this, we can use the difference operation of a Boolean modifier or the bool tool to accomplish the same result. I'll do this first using the Boolean modifier under Modifier Properties. Select your scan, then add modifier, select Boolean, make sure it's set to difference, then select the mesh object to use for the Boolean operation. In this case, we'll select a cube. Give Blender a second to think, and voila, we've gotten rid of the trash bin. Next up, we'll try this out using the Bool tool, which is a shortcut for carrying out the same operation. Make sure the Bool tool is enabled by checking the add-ons under the Preference menu. To use the Bool tool, select the object you wish to be removed, and then the object you want to remove it from, and use the shortcut Control shift b This will bring up the Bool tool menu, and you can select your Boolean method from there. In Blender Sculpt mode, we can smooth and accentuate sections of our scan. Like when removing geometry, switching back between the solid and material preview modes while sculpting will be helpful. By default, the draw brush will be set to move vertices outward, adding depth to your scan. If you hold Ctrl while using the brush, you'll draw inwards or remove depth. Holding Shift while you use this brush, you'll enter smoothing mode, which, as you may have guessed it, smooths out any irregularities in the mesh. You can dial in the radius and the strength for all of these brushes in the toolbar at the top of the viewport to fine tune your sculpting. I find myself using the draw, smooth, flatten, and grab brush the most when doing quick cleanups. To quickly touch up textures, I use the texture paint mode and the clone brush. The clone tool lets you select a part of your texture to copy onto another, just like in photo editing software. In Blender, we do this by moving the cursor to the part we would like to clone by hovering over it, holding shift, and right clicking. Once you've selected the part you'd like to clone from, left click to draw over the section you'd like to clone to. You can adjust the size of your brush in this and other of Blender's viewports by pressing the F key and moving the mouse to the size you'd like the brush to be. To select the size, left click, and to cancel, right click. And now we've covered some best practices for photogrammetry and cleaning up your scans. In the next video, we'll bring your scans to life with animation and rigging. If you've enjoyed this video, please let me know by giving it a like, and if you want to see more content like it, then consider subscribing since I'll be sharing more of what I've learned and what I know weekly. And obviously, ring the notification bell if you don't want to miss when the next video in the series drops. If you want to see some cool videos, you should click on one of these. If you've enjoyed this series and found that useful, please let me know. Damn it. Please let me know! Um.